Hello everybody, hope you're having a great day. Here's Val with another video to keep your boredom at bay. And that rhymes. This will be my first Game of Thrones video, representing the North. Hope you enjoy it! Game of Thrones is fantasy. Yes, it's made up stuff, but it's such excellent made up stuff that it has captivated millions of people. Millions, millions of, of people. people. One of the best things about Game of Thrones is that we not only have the main present story, but we also have plenty of backstory, history and lore to indulge in. And it is so realistic, you know, in the fantasy sense, that whenever we read it or hear about it, it feels like we're learning about true events from another real world or like a parallel universe. And well, we can't help but dive into it to understand how it all came to be. In this video, we will be talking about Game of Thrones Ancient History. The chain of events that define this world of ice and fire, the cause and effect responsible for this present story that we are so addicted to. And for some context, here's the world map that George R. R. Martin created for us. On the left side, you can see the continent of Westeros, and on the right side, you can see the continent of Essos. The Dawn Age is the oldest period of time that the maesters and learned men were actually able to document in some way. And basically, the one thing that is clear is that Westeros was inhabited by two races that were non-human, the giants and the children of the forest. No one really knows if they hated each other or not, but they did dig up the bones of a giant and found obsidian arrowheads in its ribs, which are the weapons that were believed to have been used by the children. I have a question though. How the hell did the children get their hands on obsidian if it can only be found in Valyria where there's volcanoes? Obsidian comes from volcanoes, right? Was there a volcano in Westeros that no one told me about? Or did children have their own logistics business? Okay, sorry, back on track. As far as we know, the giants and the children of the forest lived in relative confusing harmony, until the first men from Essos decided to invade Westeros and take over the land that wasn't theirs. Even in fantasy, humans suck. Why did they decide to invade? Um, I don't know, humans always need to expand. They were probably having way too many babies, and they had no more room for these babies, so they needed more land to raise these babies and keep having more babies. Why am I talking so much about babies? They should be glad they didn't have Facebook or they would have broken it with all those baby pictures. And yes, you might argue that the quality of life sucked and people died very easily from anything. So the birth to death ratio was probably balanced, right? Unless, whoring was a thing back then too, which is entirely possible. I mean, they must have been more wild and civilized, right? And I'm sure they didn't have whorehouses, but come on, who do you think were the entrepreneurs in that field? And I get a feeling that whoring back then was more like one man doing a lot of women instead of one woman getting done by a lot of men. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and say that the first men were wild and engaging in coitus without protection more often than they were dying. And so, my baby theory is complete. Now, before I keep butchering Game of Thrones history more than a maester on acid, let's get back on track again, shall we? Anywhere from 8 to 12,000 years ago, the first men invaded Westeros by the thousands through the broken arm, which was not yet broken. There was a lot less water there and enough land to just easily walk over. They of course started settling the land in the south, they started farming and raising villages, but it wasn't until they started chopping down trees that they got in trouble with the children of the forest. Because some of these trees were sacred to them. Avatar, anyone? Or real world humanity for that matter? These trees were called weirwoods, and the children used to carve faces on them. No, that's not blood, that's just red tree sap. But the children believed that by doing this, they were giving their gods eyes to watch over them. Kinda creepy. So cutting down these trees started a long ass war that lasted about 2000 years. The hunters among the children of the forest became their warriors. And they fought, as mentioned before, with weapons made of obsidian, but also some made of weirwood. They had daggers, spears, bows and arrows and such. It's also believed, but not proven, that some of them could fight with magic mainly their wise men called green seers. The legends say that they were able to communicate with animals as well and go release the kraken style on the first men, but with a wider variety of animals that weren't limited to sea. They could communicate across half a realm, delve into the past and see far into the future, and even see events at a great distance through the ice carved in the weirwoods, which gave the first men more reason to keep cutting them down. The men fought with bronze weapons, and they were larger, more powerful and more numerous so they were quite the threat. Throughout the years, they were able to push the children back farther and farther north. The legends say that in a desperate act to survive, the Green Seers gather at Mole Kaelin 
and working dark magic, they were able to flood the Arm of Dorn and turn the neck into a swamp. But some party pooper maesters claim that this was most likely just a natural event, a sinking of the land, not magic. Their argument also stands on the fact that there was no point in flooding the arm if the men had already crossed it, right? Makes sense. But after all of these years of war, a smart generation was finally born, and they decided enough is enough, we've been at this for 2000 years, things are not getting any better, how about we just stop? The children were losing, the first men were tired, and so the heroes and rulers from each race decided to meet upon the isle in the god side, which is this little thing over here, and form a peace pact. They also carved eyes in all of the weirwoods on the isle so that the gods could witness this pact. It was decided that both sides would share the land. The children were satisfied with living only in forest areas and swamps, while the men were allowed to have the rest of the land. But there was one condition. The men had to stop cutting down the weirwood trees. They both agreed to this, and then the Order of the Green Men was created to protect the Isle and all of the weirwood trees on it. The interesting thing here is that many years later, the first men actually adopted these gods as their own. And so this event marked the end of the Dawn Age, and the beginning of the Age of Heroes, which will be in another video. But wait! What the fuck happened to the giants? No one ever mentions them in this war. I mean, what started the war was cutting down the weirwood trees, and I guess the giants don't really care about gods and weirwood trees, so they didn't really have anything against the men, and they had no reason to aid the children. But after doing a little bit of research, I did find out that the, it's believed that the first men hunted the giants. If I were a giant, I would find that pretty bothersome. And if I didn't have the numbers to fight the men back, I would do what makes sense, play it safe, and retreat. And I guess that's what they did, right? Because you can't really find giants anywhere but north of the wall these days. And so that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to watch more videos like this uh, and you don't want to miss out on them, you know what to do. The button is somewhere around this page. Uh, I'm not even going to put it on the screen. You're, you're smart enough to find it on your own. Oh, there's also Twitter and Facebook. Double punch.